Real talk and real solutions. News 6 is committed to both. I'm Ginger Gadsden with News 6. You know, for nearly a year and a half now, we've been shining a light on issues in the black community, talking to experts, looking for those real solutions. Today, that conversation continues as we take a look at the business world. So did you know fewer than 1% of black business owners make $1 million or more? Now, according to the Stanford Graduate School of Business, we're talking about just 0.7%. And we're not just talking about seven figures either, and that's not even the point. The point is, is that it's 0.7%, such a small number. So we hope to help shed some light on some answers today. So I'm joined by two wonderful women from the Orlando area. Joining me to talk about some of those real solutions today is Lena Graham Morris. She is the president of the National Association of Women Business Owners in Orlando, and she's also vice president of Horace Construction. Thank you so much for being here. And Lauren Spivy, who owns a spa in Longwood. Thank you so much. I am so excited that we have the opportunity to talk about something like this because when you look at the stats, and it really isn't about making you know, six or seven figures. It's about being successful and then passing that on to other generations, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we all want to do. And I know you all didn't start at the level where you are right now. Correct. So tell me a little bit about how you got started. Lauren, I'll, I'll start with you because you are a massage therapist, but you own a spa. Correct. Okay, tell me Correct. a little bit about that. I started out as a massage therapist. I was working for other spas, which I don't think that anyone should frown upon. You know, going into business for yourself is a dream for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't, you know, snark our noses at working for someone else. And so I was in a day spa setting and then I went to a resort spa setting. And from there, I took those two experiences mm -hmm. and combined them to make my own. Okay, so Lena, tell me a little bit about your journey. Oh yeah, so great, bumpy, <laughs> good, bad, and ugly journey. Everything. Like everything. So, you know, I actually did marketing for PBS, got laid off, decided to go to hair school realized it really wasn't for me, but launched my own makeup studio. Um, and, and from there, had a lot of things happen, including being homeless, being hospitalized for 50 uh, plus days. And so uh, it kind of took me full circle because I am what I call a serial entrepreneur and birthed from entrepreneurs. So I'm f fourth generation entrepreneur, and I'm now the successor for Horse Construction, which is a third generation business. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I kind of, as I rounded out through uh, being regrouping and running a chamber. I came back to the family business and so now I'm on this, I guess, I hope it's almost the last leg of my entrepreneurship journey where, where I'm gonna take the family business to the through the legacy at third, fourth generation. Lena, people have a hard time understanding how can someone lose everything, be homeless, and then become the first person of color in the position you're in right now. That didn't happen overnight. No. Tell no. me a little bit about what happened. So, you know, First of all, I have to, I have resilient DNA. I just have to say it because I, I don't even know how, sometimes I would keep going, but I, so what happened, I actually was exiting a bad relationship and got put in a position where I had just put down a deposit on my studio in a winter park. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't do both. I couldn't keep the studio and go to, mm. um, get somewhere else to live and so i was so like gung-ho about opening this studio that i decided to sleep on the floor in the studio me and my puppy for several months and um and i mean i'm okay with talking about it now but it took a long time that was maybe ooh, over a decade over a decade yeah. ago and so it was it was bad i'm not going to glamorize that at all and it was really one night i got an odd call from a friend of a friend and um, um, the statute of limitations is up, so I'm going to be real open and talk about this. So she, she said, what's wrong with you? And I was like, man, I've hit like rock bottom. And she said, you know, I'm in Texas and my house is in foreclosure. But if you can get inside, you can stay there until the bank puts you out. <laughs> real, this is a real yeah, story. Yeah. And so I was like, wow. And I, I did. And it took me six months to kind of get myself up because it had broken me down just so badly. But I was able to do that. And after that, oh my goodness, I got, um, it was like I hung in there and then I got a call one day and they were like, this is BET. 
is uh, is this Lena G? This is BET. And I was like, and I'm looking around. I'm like, BET? Like black entertainment television? The BET. The BET. Yeah. So I ended up getting a contract with BET to do like spring bling for several years. I worked with Nickelodeon. I did makeup for Barack Obama. Like, yeah, so it was... You didn't just bounce back. <laughs> you, 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 like, bounced, bounced So back. I was so glad, yeah, so I didn't yeah. didn't give in. And this conversation is so important, us being transparent, and I'm always trying to be transparent because if you don't know what someone has been through to get to these steps, it just looks like you magically appeared here. And it's so easy, yes. right? Yeah. And so my mother, I had a conversation with my mother years ago about what kind of house do you want, right? I'm not a homeowner yet. I want to be one. Like I said, my focus has been on business. Mm -hmm. I want to be one. And she says, "What? describe the kind of house you want. And I described the house that she currently lives in. And she said, baby, this is my fourth house. You know, you're looking at what I have right now yeah. and think that that is where you start. You need that a is starter not necessarily home. That's where what you she's start. saying. Yeah, yes, yeah. and so I think that that relates to business. Yeah. You look at someone that you view as successful, but that's not where you start. You know, success, right, it, it takes stages and phases and sometimes and what, and what, and what is success, right and what yes. is your definition of success yes correct, correct i think that you have to hone in on that i do want to ask both of you it's like mm -hmm. what's the one thing when you got started that you wish someone had told you right from the beginning that would have saved you either time or money or both oh i have to oh. <laughs> you. you know everyone is not your client and, you know, when you get started, sometimes it's about paying the light bill and, you know, I, you, you just are hustling in a sense mm -hmm. and you lose sight that everyone is not your client and you can make bad decisions. The other thing is hard conversations. If I could go back and say, you need to have those hard conversations right away. The conversations yes. that make yeah. you cringe and the hair oh, stand up on the back of, course, of your neck. Of course. You have to do that. And the more comfortable you are having those conversations, the more you'll grow, right? So that really relates to my my tip is uh, build the community. Even if you don't have it within mm -hmm. your family or friends already, you need good counsel, yes. whether it's paid or not, yes. not being afraid to pay people that know what they're talking about. Uh, because if you don't, if you are just relying on your ideas and you have never done this before, you are set to fail. I call it that backroom advisory committee. <laughs> Everybody needs the Everybody backroom, needs right? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So what's the number one thing you would say to someone? Because everybody knows someone who says, oh, I have a great idea. And then next thing you know, and you wonder why they weren't successful. It's like, it was a good product or it was a good idea, mm -hmm. but they already closed or they, they no longer do that. What's the one, give me some advice on what they should so, do first. Well, I have to speak from the heart on this one. And from the heart, I'm going to tell you, if it's not everything that you want, when you wake up, go to sleep, breathe, if you're not willing to give up everything that you have mm -hmm. to run your business, then you need to take a second look. Yeah, but how important is it to set realistic expectations? Because I know you say you have to wake up every morning. I, I love what I do, but I don't wake up every morning. It's like, got to get to new six. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you just feel like, okay, today is going to be one of those days. How do you set realistic expectations? I think that you always have to have a plan. I take, I tell my consulting clients and everything that I do, you have to have a plan because in those moments, because there will be those dark moments, those moments of doubt, it's a point of reference for you. You go back and you look at the plan. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have a strong business plan. It's a working document, operating plan, marketing plan, all of those plans in place so that in those moments where you're like, I don't remember why I was doing this. Yeah, yeah. You look at the plan. You must remember why you you're must doing remember. it. Or you will just stay in bed or say, you know what? <laughs> These job offers are coming in my email. I'll just do that, you know? Yeah. So you have to remember and stay focused on why am I doing this in the first place. And okay. Have an accountability partner. Yes. Just to really sure. quick. That you can, when you, ha that isn't a safe space. Mm -hmm. So when you, you can, you can be vulnerable yeah. with and say, you know what, girl, I don't know if, if I can do this anymore, and they can say, they can talk you through it. Yeah. That's very important. Sure. You need more than just your hype woman. You need right. somebody who's going to be honest yes. with you. All right. For anyone watching this and they want to get in touch with you, Alina, how can they get in touch with you? So my brand is The Entrepreneista. So you can follow <laughs> me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, at The Entrepreneista, and Nabo. Orlando.org, you can find okay. me. All right, Lauren, how about you? Yes, so my last name is Spivy, and it is Spivy Spa. 
You can find us spivyspa.com on Instagram and Facebook. It's at spivyspa. And it's so nice to see you. And hopefully we'll get a chance to chat again really soon. Good luck. Yes, thank All you. right. And thank you for joining us for Real Talk, Real Solutions. I'm your host, Ginger Gadsden. I hope to see you next time.